<laughs> you look like a garbanzo bean and it's very interesting. Me. Mm -hmm. I get smashed. Another physicist and another physicist. This, 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 this. Makes sense. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Stephanie, and today we are back with another dun dun mukbang. Woo! Today I'm super excited because we are going to be eating four massive servings of nuclear udon BB noodles with massive amounts of seafood. We've got bottleneck clams, we've got black mussels, we've got shrimp, we've got king crab. Well, one king crab leg. We've got squid, squid tentacles, bok choy, and some green onions. I'm really excited. It looks really, really spicy. I took a bite, not gonna lie. It was very spicy, was delicious. Damn it. Okay, <laughs> so before we get started, I just wanna say something. I feel like normally I am very bad with commitment other than in relationships. I don't like committing to big, big, massive life choices, right? And one of those things that really scared me and was a really big reason that I didn't finish college was student debt. Could you imagine? I can't even commit to a pair of jeans but you want me to commit to multiple years and years and years and years of debt? I don't think so, mister. So today's video is actually sponsored by Unbound, otherwise known as Lumerit, or you guys know them as Lumerit. If you guys have never heard of Unbound, I'm gonna leave a link in the description because honestly, I have gotten so many messages, so many comments of people saying that Unbound changed their lives. And so essentially what you do is you click the link in the description and you fill out a form. And you kind of just tell them like, hey, this is the type of degree that I want. This is how much time I have to complete the degree, you know, how much I am willing to spend, and they'll actually email you back within 24 hours with like a detailed college roadmap of, you know, what classes not to take, because a lot of the times colleges try to make you take classes that you don't need for your degree, because that means more money for the college. And so they tell you that, they tell you how long it's going to take, how much money you're looking at, and if you decide, hey, I like Unbound, then you can actually take accredited college courses through their program. This is amazing, because I know what you're going to say, I don't want to graduate from like unbound college degree. Like I don't even know what kind of college that would sound like. Where did you graduate from unbound? It's not like that because these are all accredited college courses that you can actually transfer to virtually almost any college of your choosing. That is amazing and that's actually gonna save you a ton of money and you're gonna have way less debt because you don't have dormitory fees, you don't have all of these crazy unnecessary class fees, textbooks are included and so it's just gonna be a much better, much more stress-free college experience. Make sure to check the link in the description if you're thinking about going to college, you've been to college, didn't finish, or you're about to go to college. It's just better to know your options and be informed. So thank you Unbound for sponsoring today's video and let's get into the food. I'm so excited. Let's do this bite. Did I just get red all over my face? Uh -uh. Did you slap? I felt it. <laughs> okay, it's real saucy. Mmm. Wow. Mmm. What the heck? These noodles are so nice and chewy. Mm hmm Really bouncy. Mm hmm Mmm. And Stephanie actually made this. So I did. that's like 20 times more impressive. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Wow. It's spicy, but it's not like I was gonna say unbearable, but I think I changed my mind. It's pretty spicy, but it's so good. It's like a good spicy. Mm. Here. Mm -hmm. Giant ass shrimp too. Holy cow, that's so good. Wow. Wow, it is really spicy though. Oh my gosh. It's so spicy and good, but I'm using kimchi as my chaser. That's how spicy it is. Wait, I think I did splash. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. Kimchi with this is so good. Oh wow. I just swallowed an entire squid tentacle by accident. And I am so impressed that I didn't choke, honestly. <laughs> wow. I did good. Wow. Mm. Wow. Okay. Let's try this shrimp. 
Mhm. This is perfect because it's been so gloomy in LA. It's been very rainy. <laughs> Today with the rain, I want to talk about something. Honestly, today's sponsorship is very appropriate because I'm going to sound like an absolute idiota while I explain this theory, this kind of, um, what would you call it? I don't even know what people call it. An interpretation of science, of quantum mechanics. Yes, bitch. I'm literally about to talk about quantum mechanics and do I know what that is? Absolutely not. That's why you should check out Unbound. I'm gonna do my absolute best. Honestly, I watched three different videos on quantum mechanics and all three of them, I think they were supposed to be marketed towards like middle schoolers who don't know quantum me mechanics and I still was very, very confused. I what almost- What does that even mean? <laughs> Don't ask because I don't know. <laughs> I almost watched this like 45 minute documentary about it and then I started it and then I fell asleep and then we woke up and here we are eating peeping noodles because I just don't understand it. So this is what's going on, right? Sonia's gonna tell you about her dream. But I'm gonna tell you about it. <laughs> so quantum mechanics all put a little definition here because we're not really talking about quantum mechanics in itself. We're talking about, it just got so bright and I look as pale as a ghost. Because of quantum mechanics came this interpretation of life, interpretation of physics, which is called the many worlds theory. And it's an interpretation of what might possibly happen in the world. It has not been proven. They kind of consider it a physics interpretation and also a thought experiment, right? It's not something that they can actually prove and it's not something that they can give you like the probability of like this is absolutely what's happening in the universe but this one sounds like a lot of very smart intelligent people were on drugs when they thought of it because it sounds crazy to me but there's a lot of people who wholeheartedly believe in it and I believe that if I was a little bit smarter and understood a little bit more maybe I would be able to relate to it harder but in this sense it's just really wild so quantum mm -hmm. mechanics kind of has um, me trying to look like I know what I'm talking about but I don't okay I'm just gonna tell you about an experiment. You have talked about this and I had no idea that this contributed yes, yes to the many worlds theory. And so the way that this works is there was this physician way back in the day, I believe his name was like Erwin Schrodinger. He uh -huh. put a cat in a box and this was his theory. He said, if I put my cat in a box mm -hmm. and I have this poison in a glass jar and I put some radioactive material inside of the box and mm -hmm. if the radioactive material decays, then that means that the jar of the poison will explode and the cat will die, yeah. right? But if the radioactive material does not decay, then the poison will never be released into the box. And so he said that there's something called a superposition, which means that you are either or you're a little bit of both. So he's saying that the radioactive material is both decaying and not decaying, yeah. right? Yeah. And so that means technically if the radioactive material can be both at the same time, does that mean the cat is dead and also alive at the same time? Mm -hmm. I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. Are they trying to explain this to to middle schooler to to middle school kids. Well, I'm not sure if it was two middle school kids, but they really dumbed it down. Oh. That's what the commenters were saying. Oh. And then I was like, really? I thought they smartened it up. <laughs> it was like, this sounds like a college, you know, professor. Yeah, and so he said, that means that the cat is both dead and alive at the same time. But then how does that only apply to the cat? If you say this applies to the cat, then it must apply to everything in the outside world, outside yeah. of the box. So yeah. that means that, that the person who has to discover the cat is also either dead or alive. So this led to another physician, and another physician is a doctor, bit. Another physicist and another physicist, physicist. So pretty much what they're saying, it's such a hard thing to explain. Like I feel like I understand like the bare minimum basics of this entire theory and this interpretation, but I just don't know how to explain it, right? Me giving myself an excuse. Um, <laughs> so pretty much it's saying that how do you decide that this cat, so when you open the box, you will see that the cat is either alive or dead. Huh? So up until that point, what in the universe decides how this cat goes from two states of being dead and alive to to one. Mm -hmm. Because when you open it, it's not going to be both. It's going to be either alive yeah. or dead. So how does the universe decide that? That seems crazy. That doesn't really go 
towards the theories of a lot of physicists because that means like it's is it random that doesn't make sense you have to be able to explain this and essentially they created this theory the people that believe in it otherwise known as the many worlds theory which means that there are many worlds so they said that you can only experience certain things and the one thing that nobody can experience is death and so what they were saying is that every time a molecule whether it's a person or a bug or a cat experiences death or makes a decision the world splits into two so to put it it's like simpler they're saying if I got hit by a car mm -hmm. and I instantly died because I cannot experience death the world would be split into two where one of them I die and I never get to experience it again and then in the other world the one that I keep living in is the one where I recover mm. in the hospital uh -huh. and then a couple years later so the world is without Stephanie in this one everyone's like that's what we've been waiting for uh -huh. I'm just kidding. the world is without Stephanie in this one this one Stephanie has recovered from her car accident and yeah. then Stephanie gets hit by a flying piano fell out of a New York City apartment window mm -hmm. I get smashed now again because I can't experience death the world splits again Mm -hmm. in the one that I have died and the world lives on without me and then my consciousness goes to a world where I'm not dead okay. and I recover yeah and so pretty much it's very confusing because they're saying that it's not even just about dying and not dying it's about every decision that's made that mm -hmm. the world slips into two so they're saying that any decision that you have to make there's another universe out there somewhere where you made the opposite decision and the world continues on and they're mm -hmm. saying you yourself are only living living in this reality, but there is someone that is the other Stephanie in that decision that is equally as important in consciousness. Okay. So a lot of movies, they make it seem like if you collide with the parallel universe and you meet your other self, that you are still like the protagonist. And that person is just like a robot or like science weird, you know, <laughs> but it's actually like all of them are an equal part of your consciousness. Sure. But you are only experiencing this one. And the reason that a lot of people believe this is because it doesn't make sense how a universe would decide how something goes from two different states to one state. Makes sense. Yeah. Kind of. Kind of. Not really. So how does that apply to our lives though? Did it change anything? Mm-mm. Oh. It's just a thought experiment, you know? Mm. I kind of see it as people who strongly believe that we're living in a simulation. Mm -hmm. Where it's like, it, when you think about it, it could be there, but there's no proof yet that we can, there's no way to even prove it. Mm -hmm. In theory, you could say that this is considered immortality because you never actually die. Because the one thing that you can never really experience is, is being dead. And okay. so what they're saying is with this idea of many worlds, when you keep splitting off and your consciousness keeps splitting into other forms of reality, technically you yourself, you never really die. Yeah. And so a lot of people say that a lot of people believe this because the normal fear, which I don't know if you guys have heard about this, but a lot of people have existential crises. Yeah. I've never had that. Okay, hold on, hold on. Yes. I have a quick question yes. before you go into whatever crisis. <laughs> um, yeah, you can keep splitting and live on, but what if you're 120 years old? Do you live on at to 130? Did I just challenge your theory that you don't have an answer to? I wonder that too. Mm -hmm. And I haven't seen like these documentaries on it, but I read a Reddit post mm -hmm. where they say you split off into a reality where the lifespan is longer. Because what? long time ago, the lifespan was only like what? 30 years. That lifespan. doesn't make sense. Well, the squid is good. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Stop! You make me sound so stupid. No, no, no. But damn, that squid good. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay, I'm sorry. It all leads to a story. Hold on. I was about to say. Mm-hmm. Mm. So good. I can't even. Does it lead to a crime? Husband kills the wife <laughs> and tells her in the other world you live on. Mm -mm. Wow. Oh my god. 
I read a comment on one of those very serious documentaries uh -huh. that was like, my wife, take out the trash, me, in a different reality, I don't have a wife. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I was about to, I thought he said, in a different reality, I already took out the trash, so. So joke's on you, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> so what trash? Mm hmm I get more kimchi, it's so good. Yeah. Wow. In the other reality. I got my own kimchi. Rude. No <gasps> you just offended every Korean. A lot of people say that it was created and made for people who have existential crises. And mm -hmm. essentially what that is, is it's something that I've never experienced. So if you've experienced it, please leave it in the comments. But it's not like a quarter life crisis of like, what am I doing with my life? Or like a midlife crisis where mm -hmm. you are a 50 year old man and you end up buying a Corvette. Like it's not like that. It's more of the sense that you wake up one day and you start disassociating with your life because you realize that one day you're gonna die and you're just not gonna be there. Like your soul, your consciousness is no longer me giving myself an existential crisis mid mukbang. It's it not gonna be there. It's like what's the point? It's kind of like what's the point but it's also the reality of like a lot of people say what it feels like is you're not even making your own decisions because your consciousness is just gonna be gone. Mm. You know, there's just no point in really living to the best of your ability because one day you will just cease to exist completely. Okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> that just reminded me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> On my phone, really. The shrimp is calling the ocean. And so a lot of people believe that this is what's to prevent it because it's technically considered immortality. A lot of people find comfort in it, but what if you're one of the few people that don't? If you don't find the comfort in immortality, and that's what happened to a Redditor two years ago. And this is one of Reddit's mysteries, right? Reddit has a lot of mysteries because a lot of the times users either troll or they disappear or something happens. Or maybe they just leave their Reddit account. They decide, I don't want to Reddit anymore. I'm on TikTok now. Whatever it may be, there's a lot of mysteries. Now this one to me is very confusing. It's very striking and alarming because a a lot of the times I'll read about these Reddit mysteries and I'm like, you know what? I do a little investigation and I feel like this is fake. This is this is obviously a troll. Like this person posted this, you look up their history, like it just, you know. Yeah. But this Reddit account was a man by the name of Jay. Now, Jay was interesting because prior to making any post about quantum mechanics, he was posting about like just random things. I think he posted about like Nike for over a year. So he had this Reddit account that had his name in it. It didn't say throw away two, three, four, five, eight. And he was posting for over a year consistently on multiple different accounts. And they were all very regular, average, mundane posts. <clears throat> Until one day in 2017, he um, made a post and it was a very, very very alarming post for a lot of people because the the title itself said you know I just found out and just started di looking deeper into physics immortality I believe is what he called it which is otherwise known as the many worlds theory where you just never die so their their whole for him he just believes I will never die mm-hmm <laughs> that's interesting mm-hmm okay or at least your consciousness will never die. So he believes if he gets hit by a car, he will recover in his world. In the in one of the worlds. Yeah. So he will just keep living on. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if it's that is that the point whole point of the whole theory? Or that's how some people took it. That's how some people right. take it. Some people take it in a way that it's not that you will never die. They're saying like a piece of you dies, but your like conscious, your conscious could yeah. continue on. Yeah, in a different world, right? Mm -hmm. That's so weird. That sounds very kind of dumb because that then somebody okay, let me just jump off this building mm -hmm. and see what happens. <laughs> yeah. Because physics. Mm -hmm. I believe most people believe it's kind of like a, a numbers game. You yourself, as you are today, might die. And you will be gone, but mm -hmm. your consciousness that you will no longer be a part of will be living on. 
Does that make sense? Yeah. It's almost like you split into two people. Mm. And you die, but the other you lives. Mm. But he didn't like the idea of that. And so he posts this in the title and he says, listen, I can't do this anymore. The idea of being held against my world in this universe when I want to die, but my consciousness keeps living on is not an idea that I can get comfortable with. I know that maybe some of you guys believe this and maybe some of you guys know just way more about it than I do. Please leave it in the comments because obviously I have no idea what I'm talking about. And this was way above my intelligent grade. <laughs> I'm like, hello, what? Quantum mechanics? And so leave it in the comments. But he was just very distraught by this. He said, listen, like when I want to go, I want to leave this earth. Like I don't want to be held here against my will and forever live on in different realities. And I just like, I have no control over my consciousness. It will never end. I will never end. It'll just keep going and going and going and going. And he put in the little body of the text. He just said, I can't do this anymore. That's all he wrote. And so obviously people are very alarmed. And so he pretty much said the idea of this immortality gives me the heebie-jeebies and I don't want to do it anymore now everybody's alarmed and they start immediately responding to him like what are you talking about guys don't worry Jay it's just a thought process it's literally not proved like this is just one of those interesting things people like to talk about it's just dinner talk and then someone commented you know it's just something people like to talk about when they want to sound smart it's really just yeah. a lo load of bullshit like it doesn't make any sense yeah. only Elon Musk would believe such a thing you know they were trying to calm him down I don't even know if it really turns into a debate it seemed like most of the people were there to try to support him from having an existential crisis oh. and so a lot of people were saying things like it's a thought experiment technically it won't happen and even if it does you won't even be in that reality for that long you'll probably be dead like you the part of you will be dead right yeah. stuff like that just saying all of these things and then some people were actually very curious they we're like why does it really bother you like yeah. most people would be very excited at the idea of immortality and then he commented back like i just don't want to be forced into my consciousness forever i don't want to live in my consciousness forever exactly like that and so people were a little bit alarmed and they couldn't really do much like if someone posted something that kind of calmed him down for two seconds he would immediately start freaking out again and so this guy who was very busy usually for the past year posting about Nike, posting about very everyday stuff. In the next three days, posted mm -hmm. over 14 posts of hysteria, of just crisis, of I don't know what to do, I can't do this anymore because of quantum uh, mechanics immortality. And he starts losing it. And every time he posts, it gets darker and more helpless and more out of control and paranoid. And I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to do this anymore. And then finally, he made his last post in February of 2017, from what I know. And he posted saying, I'm not doing this anymore. Mm -hmm. And he said that he was going to end it all. And the people couldn't even help him because it ended up getting automatically flagged by the bots, not because of the content of his message, but because of the way that he had titled his title. So uh -huh. the subreddit like wanted their titles in a very specific way mm -hmm. and he didn't title it that. So it got automatically flagged. It was later released and it was just saying like, I can't do this anymore. Goodbye. How was it released? I think like the moderators probably oh, like, yeah. That. What? And then what happened? And then he never posted again just went silent. Mm -hmm. So this is very weird, especially for Reddit, because when you're talking about a throwaway account, it's a completely different story because they mm -hmm. made this account for the purpose of throwing it away once they get something off their chest. But yeah. this guy, his name was in his account. Well, at least we can assume his name was Jay. And yeah. on top of that, it's weird because he had been using this Reddit account for a year, regularly posting about other things. Mm -hmm. And suddenly he has this breakdown and he doesn't update anyone. He doesn't say, hey guys, yeah, I had an existential crisis it's all good and then goes back to like nike forums he didn't do that yeah. he just posted this one last post and his account was never used again so people think it's real because well people think something happened to him not that quantum mechanics is real yeah just to clarify but um people seem think something happened to him because it's just not your typical reddit troll or even somebody who's over it Mm -hmm. Right, so people who are over it, they're like, oh my god, I had an ex existential crisis. Most of the time, avid Redditors, because they love the community, they'll let the community know, mm -hmm. hey, thanks for helping, guys, I'm over it, <laughs> yeah. you know? Or if they're embarrassed, they'll delete their old posts, you know, and then move on. Uh huh. But it's just. But it's, this guy just really stopped. Yeah. And it seems like something happened. Mm hmm. Hmm, interesting. 
So I'm not sure. So how how did you find out about this? Did this thing did it become so big? It wasn't massively big, but there's like Reddit forums about Reddit mysteries too. And how do you feel about this? I feel weirded out. I feel like something happened, unfortunately. Because I don't see the purpose, which is kind of similar to the next thing that I'm going to tell you guys about, which is another Reddit mystery. And I feel like I've talked a lot about Reddit mysteries where a lot of the times that person or that account being a troll is a very valid theory. Mm -hmm. But both of these cases, I find it very hard to believe that these are either trolls in the making because this was from a throwaway account and it was titled Secret Notebook was their username. Now, usually with throwaway accounts, I kind of look at it with a lot of skepticism because I'm like, you know, this could definitely be a troll. There's no past history to kind of familiarize, you know, Redditors yeah. with this person's personality to, you know, if they were married and you look back two years into their Reddit history and they're like posting on bridal forums, then you can kind of verify, oh, you know, this was two years in the making. No one's going to be that hard of a troll. But it was a throwaway account and she posted on the relationships forum or the Reddit account subreddit. And the relationships subreddit is a very interesting place because they are... There are very valid relationship questions and there are also very alarming ones because majority of the time when you are in a dangerous or scary or even creepy relationship, you don't really know it. And so a lot of people will post about that and then you'll realize, wait a second, oh. your husband sounds kind of nuts as a third party looking in. And so this woman, she posts and she says, listen, I'm 30 years old and my husband is 35 years old. We've been married and together for four years. Very happy, he's never cheated on me. I never feel like he's cheating on me. Like it's not like he is out at night, he's not texting or always on his phone. He's not like making secret emails from what I know. Mm -hmm. Everything seems to be fine. And so today I was cleaning the closet. It was a home cleaning day and I was going through the closet and I found this notebook. So I take the notebook out and I open it and I think he has a weird obsession with women. It's a little uh, weird what? because each page was dedicated to a different woman in his life. It included his own family members, my family members, my friends, his friends, and then also just random people that he would see. So it would say woman in front of Target, mm -hmm. Burger King drive through attendant, you know, and he would write the dates of each time he first met these people. Mm -hmm. And then he would write down their encounter when they met, what this female was wearing, how they were dressed, their body proportions, weight, all of that, but it wasn't written in like a Fifty Shades of Grey way where it's like, I'm gonna do this, you know? It was just kind of like, her weight was this. I mean, like, he would say things like, she was gorgeous, you know? But it wasn't like, mm. she was so hot, I'm gonna make So he was like beats, making descriptions you know? of yeah. people? Like a mm -hmm. Pokemon description, like tall. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. shoots fire type of thing. Exactly, was mm -hmm. making descriptions, but just females, not just people. No. Just females. And then some of them, he would even rate them at the end with a number, right? But what's very interesting was that she posted this and she said, you know, I don't feel like he's cheating on me or trying to cheat on me. Just want to put that out there because I feel like that's what everyone is automatically going to say and think. And so she posts this on the relationship subreddit and everyone has a field day with it. First of all, you've got obviously all the people that are like, this is his his memory journal for future usage, you know, some guys are just into that where they don't like to use the free internet for imagination purposes. They like to imagine random people at Target. Weird, very creepy, but a lot of people were saying that. And some people are saying, you know, I actually have a friend who has OCD and they do this. Like, what? it's just, it's not about women. Like, they were saying that their friend doesn't necessarily do it and write about women, but they have this weird habit where they either write about every food that they've eaten. Like, they just have to. Like, it's part of their, like, for some reason, somehow it makes them feel organized. It makes oh. them feel a sense of control. And then also to just, like, maybe you started it for shits and giggles when you were dieting or something. But then, like, because you have OCD, it turns into, like, a daily thing. And, like, mm. some people may think you're crazy. But it, it was just weird that it was about women, yeah. you know? And so some people were like, yeah, it could be an OCD thing, could be something like that, maybe let him know. And then someone even suggested, like, it could be a memory thing, maybe he's alarmed that his memory is going away. They had friends who are young, and their memory starts going away, so they start frantically writing things down. And because they can't remember all people, maybe they're like, okay, just females. It's interesting because with the memory bank of, like, being a creepy guy who likes to think about people he saw at Target, people were confused because 
I mean, it said that a lot of the girls that were rated in the journal, they weren't like high ratings. So it seems weird for a man who is that creepy to only write about, you know, like it would make more sense if he only wrote about like very hot girls he met. But it was so like, he writes about everyone. Including his own family members, which is weird. Like, so people are like, I don't know if that's like true. grandmas and everyone. Yeah, huh. anyone that's, okay, well, anyone he has an encounter with, he does. But strangers, even if they don't say hello or bump into each other, he might write about them if he's intrigued for some reason. Huh. But everyone he talks to, he'll even talk about, like, we had a conversation Wait, she shared the whole journal? She couldn't get through the whole journal because mm -hmm. it was completely full. So she shared some? Yeah. Huh. Very interesting, that right? Very weird. And so people are like, I don't think it's that because that's weird. And like with technology these days, he could have snuck in a picture, which is illegal. But like he could have if he's that creepy. And yeah. also some of them are his family members and some of them are like rated fours. And like he has like tens all over the book. So like why wouldn't you just write about the tens? Why the fours too? Like it just doesn't make logical dude sense. And then the people with the saying that it was either OCD or memory issues, some people were like, I have tons of friends with OCD and they don't do that. And they were just like, it's just a little weird. Weird, especially the rating and they were also saying with OCD it's very consistent that you keep everything consistent yeah. so the fact that some of them weren't rated is weird mm -hmm. so they were saying that goes against all things that people think of OCD I don't know there's probably a billion different versions of OCD and some people don't do it all the same some people were arguing that and then some people were also saying maybe he's a designer they were like I know a graphic artist who literally writes about random people that they saw because they liked their facial expressions or facial features and they wanted mm -hmm. to create these characters and think about it if you're a graphic designer and you want to create a TV show with hundreds of characters in at least in the background some of them are main characters but some of them are just passerbys you have to have a lot of distinct faces in your head so that they don't all look like the same Person. We we'll have a lot of theories yeah. on this one. And they were saying a lot of artists, a lot of graphic designers are known for either like even approaching people in public and be like, can I just take a picture of you? Like you're, you know. You look intriguing. You look intriguing. <laughs> you're Never. the most interesting potato I've ever seen. <laughs> you look like a garbanzo bean and it's very interesting. <laughs> okay, yeah. I need a picture. And I'm a vegetable photographer. <laughs> And I draw vegetable paintings for a living. <laughs> so this will be perfect. And so they were like, well, maybe... I think the most important is, what does the wife think? But the wife, you know, she did mention that it didn't feel like he was cheating on her in yeah, any way. Fine, because he writes about 5,000 people. Mm -hmm. So obviously he can cheat with everybody. So what does she think that he's doing? Does she have any conclusion or she's just like, this is so weird? Just weird. And is she talking to him about it? If you find this in my drawer... What would you do? Oh my god. <laughs> I would talk to you about it. So you would talk to me. You're not trying to find answers by yourself. No. Okay, so okay, let's say you found it, right? Mm-hmm. Would you be alarmed? Mm-hmm. And you ask me. Mm. -hmm. Well, these days I'm a lot more cautious. Uh-huh. So I'd probably tell somebody. Okay. And then you that ask I'm me. gonna ask you a very controversial question. Okay. So if I disappear, sister. Mm. It's because okay, he fine. Me. And then, then you ask me, right? And then I tell you it's just for my memory. Bullshit. Play a memory game. Go play Sudoku, bitch. Sudoku is not even memory related. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck? I think it's a memory thing. I think it's creepy. So, and then that's it. I tell you, that's it. That's no, just a memory. I thing. don't believe you. Fine. You're going to therapy. <laughs> <laughs> Like, it's, I think it's strange. Okay. I think there's got to be an underlying message. I'm not saying the underlying mm -hmm. message is that you're a serial killer, but there's got to be something that triggered it. Like, maybe you are scared of women. Maybe you got, like, yelled at by a woman, and then now you're scared of women, and so you write it down just in case you feel like these women are going to kidnap you and kill you one day. Yes, that's it. <laughs> no! So then we go to a therapist, and we find out what's the problem, find the root of the problem, because I feel like this could be one of those things where maybe it's not that you're a serial killer, you just have have this weird subconscious thing that you're suppressing and it comes out in this shape <laughs> or you could be a serial killer I mean I don't necessarily think that you're a serial killer but if you are I already told my sister who I am and where you are and what I'm confronting you about so don't even try it boo-boo don't even try it
Anyways, continuing on, people were getting alarmed because a lot of therapists joined in and they chimed in. And one therapist in particular said, listen, I deal with a lot of clients and I just want to say that this is absolutely a massive red flag. There's definitely something going on. Not saying it's a dangerous thing, but it could potentially be dangerous. If you do confront him, it could potentially be dangerous. This could be something that he's either hiding, suppressing, or there's an underlying issue. Okay. Kind of similar to what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> They're just saying that this is a dangerous red flag. And then gave her tips on how to confront him. Yeah. And she never posted again. And the next day, she ended up removing her post and deleted her throwaway account. God damn. Now, this is weird for a lot of reasons. Uh -huh. So the first reason that this is weird is that usually when you're, when you're talking about a throwaway account that deletes their thing, it's very rare. So typically they get their answers and sure, there is the possibility that she confronted him, realized it was a very valid excuse, whatever that may be. Like leave it in the comments. What is an excuse that you would take that you would be like, this makes sense, right? Because I can't think of any. And so, you know, some people are saying maybe she confronted him, he told her what's up and it was a very valid thing and she chose to believe her husband. And so she was like, I don't need this throwaway account anymore. And so she deleted her post and deleted her account the next day. Now, the second theory is that maybe she confronted her husband and he either deleted the account or forced her to delete the account, which either way is not a good sign. The third theory, which I don't really believe, is that she's a troll. Now, let me tell you why I don't believe that this is a troll account, because typically with troll accounts, why are people trolls? To get attention. Yeah. So now that she got the attention, she wasn't really interacting. She wasn't responding. She wasn't posting up about it. That's true. She deleted it. So it's not to get attention. It was genuinely for advice because people who are out to get attention, they'll interact and say, no, I mean, yeah, only on Wednesdays my husband, you know, writes in this journal. Like, they'll, like, respond and stuff because they like the yeah. attention. You so know? which theory do you believe in the most? I don't think that she was, like, murdered by her husband. I hope not. But I do think, like, he probably found out about it and somehow, like, manipulated her or forced her to delete it. Because he seems creepy. No offense. <laughs> he seems weird. So, so all the therapists believe there's something wrong. There's dangerous behavior. Huh. They're not saying that something's wrong with him, but this is a behavior that's a red flag. That's alarming. Yeah, so they're saying, like, you know, obviously if he gets checked out and he's fine, he's fine. But it's just this behavior in itself is alarming. Yeah. So they're not saying... That's very weird. You know, yeah. It's really weird. Hmm. What would you guys do if your significant other had this notebook? Would you be creeped out or are you just like... What would you do if I had a notebook and it was just filled with dudes? Damn, like I'll show you the, my notebook. Honey, that's <laughs> so creepy. Mingo's like, I have a notebook of all the squirrels. <laughs> yeah, and then we'll, we'll, we'll kind of play like match. Mm -hmm. So this five, you got a six, I got a five, okay, these two. Mm -hmm. What about this eight, you got a nine, okay, that's that's a pair. A ten and a two, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> two and a one. <laughs> <laughs> wow, so creepy. Damn. Makes me uncomfortable. See, that's a thing. The more you read stuff about this, you think that your significant other is absolutely someone who you can trust. But then you realize after reading about a lot of therapists that if you find dangerous behavior when you confront them, you should let somebody know first. And I'm letting everybody know. <laughs> that's it for today's video. Let me know in the comments what are your thoughts. Don't go snooping in closets unless you want to find journals that are very, very creepy. Everyone's like, I went into my closet and I found my journal and I'm creeped out. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Let me know in the comments, what would you do if that was your significant other? And do you believe in the many worlds theory? And if you know more about the many worlds theory and you were very triggered throughout this video because I am an idiot, I apologize in advance. And I love you guys and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.